and theorists. The agency collaborates with organizations such as Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and the United Nations. Forensic architecture practices what it refers to as counter forensics. For Buck, whose practice unfolds in between art, science or knowledge production, and activism, or if you will, through the entanglement of the artistic, the scientific, and the political, the work of forensic architecture has been really, really important from uh, the very moment the research agency was founded in 2010. I believe it is this very entanglement of art, science, and politics that we do share in common, as well as the understanding of the field of art as a site for aesthetic or political exp experimentations with the urgencies of the contemporary world. I have been learning specifically from how forensic architecture redefines art in a way that intensifies the possibility of it to intervene into the live world or real world, to use some problematic shorthands in want of a better term to name the contested art-life relationship, if you will. So the possibility to intervene into the live world and the possibility of a wider extended practice to intervene across numerous forums, forums as forensic architecture calls it, from criminal courts to campaigns and press conferences to public demonstrations to art institutions. The artistic and the culture as a forum then is what allows for the complexity of the environment for the evidence to be navigated and negotiated, an environment to grapple with complexity, if you will. Over a year ago, we have published a conversation with Ayala Weisman in, in a publication of Buck called Former West, Art and the Contemporary after 1989. And I'd like to read a brief citation from it, which to some extent guided us here at Buck throughout the preparations for this project. So I quote, Forensic architecture is an investigative practice. We are like investigative journalists, but our means of research are space and the visual domain, media and aesthetic practices. But the task that we've defined for ourselves is a kind of post-academic task. It is not only about giving birth to concepts or descriptions of things. Our aim is to find the real world political levers and try to transform investigation into action. It is not enough to reflect and criticize. Some of the arenas in which we operate are undoubtedly institutional. Courts, the Human Rights Council, various truce commissions, or international tribunals. But we try to use them tactically. The juridical move is only as good as the political process it is part of. And the question is on behalf of whom and how you can undertake it. So in that sense, it's post-academic, because it seeks not only to generate knowledge, but to activate strategic sites worldwide. It is not a melancholic practice in the sense of coming to terms with the tragedies of the past. It's a proactive and tactical practice. For instance, when we are dealing with the entanglement of negation and secrecy, this is not to arbitrate something that has already happened. Negation and secrecy are the condition for the perpetuation and perpetration of violence in the future. For me as an architect, Al continues, politics is a process, a slow process of materialization and dematerialization, of forces slowing into form. My political imagination is one in which architecture and politics come together to make something that I call the political plastic, which is a kind of a viscose medium in which forces and structures, global flows, forms and trajectories create a world that undergoes a constant process of formation." End quote. Now it is this notion of these notions of constant process of formation, of forces slowing into form, the political pl plastic, with which I would like to encourage you to look at the exhibition Forensic Justice. 
The show has unfolded through conversations between the Buck team and forensic architecture, and it zooms in on a number of recent cases of tactical forensic reclamations of justice that have been developed within the worldwide network collaborations of forensic architecture. Each work, one could say, articulates evidence-based counter-forensics, counter-forensics to dominant interpretations of respective events, rendered from multiple perspectives then the audio uh, visual installations make apparent um, and begin to sketch what forensic architecture refers to as public truth. Now, the exhibition, as the title suggests, proposes that these mobilizations can be understood as critical instances of forensic justice. The notion of forensic, uh, forensic justice, however, is far from settled in the exhibition. Rather, I believe throughout the works, it is set in motion so that it be negotiated and probed, tested from different perspectives. For one could think together with curator Anson Franke, who suggested that, and I quote again, forensic is not primarily concerned with justice. It is both before justice as that which establishes the conditions for judgment and that which happens in place of justice. And it is this gap between before justice and in place of justice that interests me most as to how forensic practice sees, seeks justice, both as you have seen or will uh, have seen in the exhibition, both social and ecological justice, but also that beyond it, beyond its or their uh, justice's uh, very limits. Well, I will not talk into, uh, in detail about the exhibition. I would like to um, mention one uh, piece, and that's investigation into the murder of Pavlos Fisas from 2018. This work inquires into the complicity of police troops in the assassination of the young Greek anti-fascist rapper Fisas, murdered in uh, um, 2013 by members of the political movement Golden Dawn after having been presented as crucial piece of evidence um, uh, in court in Greece this September, just a couple of weeks ago, this piece that uh, Buck uh, is proud to have co-produced is now presented to the public for the first time, and I really hope you find time to, uh, to uh, look at it uh, tonight. Now, the public program, Propositions Number 7, evidentiary methods that will unfold alongside the exhibition in the course of next three months expands, expands upon these notions in a series of lectures, screenings and seminars on forensic methodologies and various kinds of claims for justice within, this, um, within the multidimensional space of aesthetics, law, architecture, politics and ecology. Focusing on techniques and innovative evidentiary methods at the intersection of law, art, politics, and the changing media landscape employed in the forensic practice, the gatherings create a space for dialogue and exchange between concrete cases examined by forensic architecture, as well as ongoing political struggles in the Netherlands and beyond. This series is conceived in collaboration with Nick Axel, architectural theorist based in, here in uh, the Netherlands, based in Amsterdam. Many of you, as many of you know, this uh, series is part of Buck's long-term research project, Propositions for Non-Fascist Living. Before I offer the floor um, to Eyal and uh, uh, Christina to deliver their lecture on uh, counter-forensics, um, I would like to thank, really thank Forensic Architecture for this exciting possibility of working together, as well as to Nick Axel, for such inspiring collaboration on the public program. And I really hope you all will attend this bi-weekly uh, series of sessions. Also, I would like to thank the Dutch Ministry of Education, Culture and Science and the City Council uh, in Utrecht for their structural support uh, of our work and Mondrian Funds for their support of this project. I'm absolutely indebted to the entire team of BAC for once again going beyond and about the call of duty. And I was trying to find another metaphor that wouldn't be necessarily a military metaphor to use, but still driven by the commitment to, well, changing the world. Special thanks to Witzke Maas. Thank you, Witzke, curator of this course and publications. Um, Hede van Groningen, who has very professionally led the production process to an extent that he made me 
clear the fl uh, clean the floors this uh, morning. <laughs> and of course, Buck Executive Director Eva Postema. Um, last but not least, today's lecture by Eyal and Christina has been organized in collaboration uh, with the European Culture Foundation in Amsterdam as part of their program highlighting the work of the laureates of the Princess Margaret uh, Award for Culture, which was awarded to Forensic Architecture in May this year, for which the ECF, European Culture Foundation, my sincere thanks. And now the floor, Eyal and Christina, is yours. Thank you very much.